We're going to create a three-dimensional ramp uh, modeled with feature lines and we're going to start with some 2D information. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to type in viewport to put this into uh, two vertical viewports so we can kind of see what's going on. The left hand side will be our 2D line work and our right hand side will be uh, the 3D version of that and for that I'm going to hold my shift key down at the same time I hold my roller ball down and I'm going to tilt this model so that we can see it in three dimension here. So there's our 2D line work kind of in three dimension and we'll go back to the uh, the 2D version and we're going to start drawing our 3D lines. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure we're on the 3D line, 3D1 layer. Uh, we want to make sure that everything's layerized and, and proper and we're just going to model just the return with everything. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a feature line and we're going to use the current layer which is 3D1 and we're going to select the flow line. We're going to base this whole thing on the flow line and that's 10.5 there and then we're going to go around the arc so you type A and then we select the second point on the arc making sure it's the flow line not the top of curb and we select that and that's 10.2 for an elevation not a grade but an elevation so you need to do the E for elevation 10.2 and I believe yes 10.20 so in this side now we can see this 3D line and we're going to base the entire thing off of this 3D line. So the first thing we want to do is we want to select that 3D line and we're going to put some, some, some elevation points along this in order to be able to hold it uh, properly. So we use the elevation point. We're going to select one here and accept its elevation. These are elevations calculated based on the interpolated value based on the two elevation labels that we see on the right hand side. We're going to select here, accept its elevation, select here, accept its elevation, and select the end portion and select its elevation. And those four points right there are going to be points that we're going to utilize to create the rest of this. So, and basically I put them at the, at the change of grade. The sidewalk is coming up here and then at this point it makes a change of grade and it goes down to the bottom landing across the bottom landing and back up to the top and then moves on its merry way on the sidewalk. So We're going to start with these uh, uh, points here and starting here we're going to start using an offset command. So when we select this we can select this stepped offset command. We're going to select a point zero eight and We'll, we're going to select the, the inside of it, and the elevation difference is going to be 0.5, and that is now the top of curb. Then what we need to do is stop that command. We'll, we'll start this command, because if we continue with, the other, with, with that command like before, then everything would have to be based on the flow line, and I would have to do mental calculations or, or physical calculations. This way I don't have to. I just know that they're simple offsets from the last line. So this one is going to also be a stepped offset. It's going to be exactly 0.5 and it's going to be to the inside of the curve, an elevation difference of zero. And that builds our curve. We can kind of see what's going on here. If we want to see kind of what's going on there, you can see that, that curb step there. Go back to here and we're going to set the lip here and our lip drops down an inch and a half so what we'll do is we'll we'll start at the flow line we will offset distance is 23 instead of 24 inches which is 1.92 feet and go to the outside now and a difference of uh, 0.125 which is an inch and a half and then that 
starts that, and then we'll, the last one we'll do is the back of sidewalk. So we will select this back line here. We'll use the stepped offset again. We'll say this is a five foot sidewalk. Uh, we'll go to the inside, and a difference it, at 2% is going to be 0 0.10, which is 2 times 0 .0, 0 0.02 times 5 feet. And that gives us our complete sidewalk. So now, if we kind of want to see the effects of that a little bit better, what we can do is uh, we can draw a feature line. We'll go to Home, draw a feature line, use the current layer, and we'll select this stuff. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that this stuff is is in front of the other stuff. So we'll select sim similar, so it selects all the feature lines. We say DR for draw order, and we say front. Now, when we draw the feature line, I'm hoping that it will select the end of the feature line here, and it's not. It's still selecting. I know that because it's at layer zero, and I know that this the feature line elevation right there is 10.8. But what I can do to also show this is I can start the feature line and I can go over to this side and I can say the end of here, it accepts its elevation. The end of here, it accepts its elevation. End of here, accepts its elevation. Down here, accepts its elevation and here. And now we can see that, that curb frame uh, as it is. Uh, what I'm, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually shift this just a little bit more and bring it down, come on, just a little bit more so it's not interfering. The view of that is not interfering with the, the 2D line work. So now I'm here and I have this information. And so with feature lines, the last one in wins, which means that, that when, when feature lines cross one another, the last one edited takes precedence as far as the Z elevation when they're on the same site. So what that will do, we're going to create another feature line. We're going to uh, use the end of command to select that, that portion right here. And what you want to do, actually what you want to do is you want to start from the outside and go in. So we're going to start from the two top ramps get those locked in, and then we're going to go to the inside and get the other ones locked in. So right here, we're going to accept its elevation. We're going to accept its elevation. Remember that this is a full height curb at this point. So we don't need to um, uh, change the elevation there, but we do want to lock it in so that when we do the interior ones, they're not affecting these... Uh, so once again, we'll use current layer in this case. We're going to say the end point of here. I'm sorry. Let me let me lock lock in the flow line. So the end of here, the end of here. We'll do the end of here and the end of here. And you can see what's going on here. We've we've just solidified that that out that those outer distances so they don't move then we're going to start working in on the inside ones and again we're using the same commands as before but this time what we're going to do is we're going to select this that that's correct and then we come to here and this is the top of curb and we want the top of curb in this area to be the same elevation basically as the flow line so we can say a difference in elevation of zero. And on the right hand side, you see that get pulled down. Then we select here. And for this purpose, we're going to say the difference is going to also be zero. And then we're going to go to the that, that elevation point that we selected here. And since this is a five foot sidewalk, and five foot landing, and we want to be 2%, we're going to say difference of 0.1. And 
we can kind of see, start to see a little bit of action here, what's going on here. We just worked on this line right here, and now we're going to do this line. So once again, we do the same thing. We're going to go to the feature line, select current layer. So the END of here will accept its elevation because that's the flow line. We'll use the end of com uh, here and a difference of zero, and you see that being pulled down on the right hand side. And then we'll select here, and that difference is also zero. And now again, you see that that what's happening, the results on the right hand side. And then finally, we, we go here and it's 0.1 because it's 2% for five feet. And now that pretty much looks like a, a ramp. We can continue on with the, the gutter pan on the back side. And probably the easiest way to do this is to uh, record these elevations right here and right here, because this is going to be a full, um, uh, a full um, uh, height curb. Uh, it'll go from zero here to full height, to full height, and back to zero, back to the elevation of the sidewalk. So this point right here, when I click in here on the lower right-hand corner, I see that's 1102. And this point right here is 11, is 1088. So if I remember those, that's where I want these elevations to be. And I can kind of cheat a little bit here. I can say, go with a feature line. And so if I don't want to remember those, I can just go right off of this point, and it's going to say 11.02. And now I can go to this point and say difference of zero, so it, that's 11.02. And then do an arc, uh, next uh, second point, down here, and this point right here I know is 10.88, so I can key an elevation, 10.88. Line and select the line here, and it's 1088 here. So that gives the first portion of that feature line right there. The second thing I'm going to do is I will take um, um, another feature line, and you can do this different ways. This is just one of the ways that I do it. And I want to draw it. Here, select 1102, and I'm going to say arc, uh, second point, anywhere on this guy and to the end here, and that's 1088. Then I'm going to take this, and now if I have set it exactly six inches, it's going to pull these lines up because I just told you a few minutes ago that the last one edited wins. So what I want to do is I want to offset that just shy of six inches. So the offset distance is um, um, uh, 0.475, give it, give it about a half an inch um, batter on it. And the side to offset is here, and the difference is zero. And now what we have is a fully uh, thought out curb ramp here that basically I've done all with feature lines. Now, a couple of quick little notes. This only works assuming that, that everything is on the same site. When you have feature lines on different sites, they do not react with one another and you can't utilize their power the way we've done here. But with this, uh, we were able to uh, pretty, pretty easily and pretty quickly create this ramp. And what, if we want to see what the ramp looks like, we can say select similar here. We can go to uh, surfaces and we'll create a quick little surface. Just call it HCR for whatever reason here. And uh, we'll use all the standards for right now. Those feature lines are still set. So we want to create this surface with brake lines and utilize those feature lines. So we're going to add all those. We're going to make a middle ordinate of 0.02 to make the curves smooth. And when we do, and we go to edit this machine, this surface, we'll take a look at it 
to edit it and kind of clean it up here. So I can select the surface itself and then go to Edit Surface and Delete Line. And as I cross these lines that are beyond my design, which is the back of that curb, then it tends to clean that up. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate a couple of those lines there. And so that's looking fairly clean. I have a couple of extraneous lines here I want to get rid of. And, of course, all of these lines here because I want that to be a nice crisp edge there. And the same thing with those lines. So now we have a surface, and on the right-hand side, you kind of see the, the three-dimensional view of it. We're going to look at this surface in a little bit different light, and I want to go to um, uh, 0.5 and 2.5, but I'm going to make a copy of that surface, and I'm going to call it uh, 0.1 and 0.5. 0.1 and 0 0.5, uh, I'll call this OG, original ground. We need to look at the contours, look at their interval, changes to 0.1, and when I do, it automatically changes it to 0.5. And now we can see this, see, see the contours and see how they're coming down off of this. We see the 1.5% coming off of the off of the pad here. And then, of course, this ramp, and you see the, the flow line going from this point around to the lower point here. And that's a very quick rendition of how you might create a, a curb ramp using the 3D lines. In this view, you see the curb, you see the, the, the contours crawling up the face of this curb like that, and then also they crawl up the face of this curb, and then they, they come down as a ramp down to the lower landing. So again, that's how you would utilize feature lines to create a curb ramp.